Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. <clears throat> I'm Greg Gorbach uh, with ARC Advisory Group, and this is the session on uh, information-driven manufacturing. So I've got a short presentation to kind of kick it off and set the stage for that. And then we have um, a couple of interesting speakers that uh, I'll introduce as the time comes. So um, let's begin. Information driven manufacturing. So information, we're, we've been thinking about it, and the, 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 it's the core of this whole concept of information driven manufacturing. But we're hearing a lot about real time information and information for decision making. We, have, we know we have tons of information buried in our IT systems. How do we get that out? And we've got large volumes of data scattered throughout the plant and throughout the value chain in our customers' hands. But I, I need it where I need it. So in all those systems, it doesn't help me all that much. It needs to be visible. And increasingly, we, there's a social component and, a, and an unstructured component to the data as well. There's data from assets and equipment, um, intelligent machines. We need it for compliance. We need it for quality. We need it certainly across the value chain. So these kinds of uh, information sources and information needs are growing very quickly. But we can leverage that information to drive performance. And that's what we're talking about here today. So are you ready for tomorrow? Uh, manufacturing is increasingly dynamic and volatile. And in order to deal with that, you need the latest real-time information systems in order to stay competitive. You hear things like uh, industrial internet or connected manufacturing or collaborative value network or industry 4.0. What these have in common, among other things, is, is the notion of an information network with assets, systems, and people sharing information and leveraging it to, to run their businesses better. We also see a, a, a perfect storm of disruptive technology. So we've got you know, the cloud and mobile and social and analytics, as well as you know, the Internet of Things and, and uh, Internet everywhere. So we've got that. We've also got global markets and more and more competition, more and more regulations worldwide. Uh, uncertainty in the area of raw materials and energy. And information systems can help us drive performance in these areas as well. So the question to ask yourself is, are your, are, are your information systems capable of dealing with today's requirements, much less tomorrow's? We think of, of you know, these kind of uh, information-driven things within our plant, and we're used to thinking that. but. It's also important to think about it and across the whole value network and the rest of our plant. And one reason this is important to think, to have this sort of big picture worldview is those kinds of disruptive technologies that I just talked about, they're going to be transforming the whole network, uh, whether you, you know, try to deal with it or whether you don't. So this is uh, becoming a big factor driving manufacturers to stay up on this. In a nutshell, we believe that industrial companies that, in, that invest in and effectively utilize the emerging and available information and, analy and analysis technologies can transform their business and outcompete and outperform their peers. I won't go through the whole definition here, but the key thing is that w one of the key points buried in there is that it's a strategy that, it, that recognizes that avoiding change and staying with an older generation of technology may be a bigger risk to the organization than introducing new, new solutions when where appropriate. So we mentioned about some of the emerging technologies that are driving some of this. We've got the big data analytics th that allow you to get more insight, more process and market knowledge. We've got cloud for new information infrastructure, internet of things and mobility and social and uh, virtual display and presentation. We haven't talked about that much, but this is also an important area to make that information 
more readily available to you and more useful. So the challenge is not to just take the new technologies and do the same thing that you've always been doing, although you may certainly take the same, you know, the new technologies and do the same thing better, but the challenge is to, to find new ways of doing things and new business opportunities. So when we talk about information-driven manufacturing, the concept is to employ information-driven value networks, uh, business processes, and decision-making to support the kinds of uh, innovation and programs that your corporations will be interested in doing, things like energy management and sustainability and global growth initiatives and innovation and some new concepts like product as a service, for example. And your performance increasingly is going to depend on your ability to use masses of data while you do this. So this slide just attempts to, to look at the ecosystem. And I think I'll just click through this in the interest of time here. The, the bottom half talks about your organization and your peers and the industries you appear in, as well as some of the common uh, applications and models that you may use to drive your business today. The top half talks about some of the disruptors, which are the new technologies that we talked about, but also lots of uh, business drivers and opportunities, things like uh, you know, global markets and digitization and cybersecurity and network manufacturing and uh, risk management, all kinds of things like that that manufacturers have to, have to deal with. And, Really, to do it, they need information, uh, information tools, and information systems. So in, in the bottom line is that we're moving from some of the older concepts and building on them, really, to uh, just think about it a little more broadly and think about information as an approach that, that helps manage threats and opportunities. So this is a... Um, conventional uh, technology adoption curve from the CASM group. And I put this here to make the simple point that in the manufacturing area, in general, um, the industry need, can benefit by moving towards the left on that screen. So um, in other words, to, become, to start taking up some of, the uh, some of the technology much earlier. And it used to be that if you were very conservative, a conservative approach to this, then you really wanted to avoid almost at all costs being an early adopter or being a, you know, an innovator. Uh, you don't want to be on the bleeding edge. This was sort of the mantra. And there, you know, there are some good reasons for that because you know, there are a lot of uncertainties and a lot of risks and, and it might not pay off. Today it's really uh, gone more like this where because there are others out there primarily because there are others out there who will be taking up the technology, that risk-reward curve uh, shifts around. And you really need to be thinking about doing it quicker. So it's moved from a, a mindset that says it's risky to go too fast with technology to a new uh, requirement, a new approach that says it's risky to go too slow with technology. And we've seen this before um, in, in, if you think about industry. My, my favorite example is uh, Apple with, the, with their iPhone. You know, they took a big leap in wh what uh, believed they would do by putting smartphone in people's hand with a good design like they always do. And it's paid off very well. So, you know, uh, these new technologies are available and powerful and can start to transform your business today. And as a result, they are increasingly driving the competitive advantage for, for manufacturers. Um, so companies should think about uh, considering advanced technology as soon as possible, as soon as practic practicable, and think about being a part of the early majority and maybe even an early adopter in some cases. But don't do it you know, without getting your buy-in from your um, C-level. Don't get it. With, don't do it without buying from the top. Always a good motto, and you're still going to need some uh, ROI and business business justifications. And uh, I'm hoping we'll get a little bit of 
touching on that a little bit today with some of our presenters. <coughs> so we, with the information-driven manufacturing approach, we can generate and, and use real-time information uh, much more widely than we have in the past. So we can collect and condition and distribute and visualize, analyze, and apply the information. So we start, start to make use of that information in a, in a lot of new ways. And one of the key pieces that shows up here is, is uh, mobile, mobility. And that's, that's a core thing. So one of, the, one of the common ways we're seeing this happen is a mobile application uh, where I have some analytics that are running in the cloud that I, uh, that I can take with me. And another key dimension of this, as I've kind of hinted at before, is that this should be not just within the plant, not just within your business, but throughout your value networks. So throughout the, uh, the entire process of designing and making and delivering the products. Now the other important piece is that this isn't all happening, well it is, it's happening in a lot of different ways, but one of the nice ways that it's, this is happening is that the, the big suppliers, the enterprise platform suppliers, I call them in this case, are also cognizant of these new technologies. And in many, many cases, they're building these into their products. And so one good way to take advantage of them is work with your suppliers to uh, find out what their plans are for these technologies and where they might benefit you. Now, in ch there's a good chance that this is going to mean that you aren't going to get these technologies if you're on, you know, if you're three generations back on, uh, and haven't upgraded for a while. But if you're, if you're with their current systems and if you make a point of being with their current systems, uh, sometimes these technologies will come along. And if you work with your suppliers, uh, I'm sure they'll have some interesting things to tell you. Now here's a concept of uh, software eats the world. This is a Mark Andreessen concept, you know, the Netscape guy. Software eats the world. What does Google have to do with self-driving cars? Why is Google, why is this company doing, doing that of all things? Why not one of the car companies first? But no, it was Google. And I think that tells you a lot because it is, it is the software and some of the related new technologies that are, enable that kind of uh, autonomous vehicle to operate. So in general, the intelligent assets, and the car is an, an example of that, but it's, it's hardware plus software and analytics and, and, and an ecosystem that ties that all together. So increasingly, an asset is not just a piece of hardware. It's all of this stuff, and software is the key. So you move from uh, uh, hardware with physical components and instrumentation and some kind of communications hardware. And then when you add the software and the ecosystem, that's where you start to see a lot of differentiation in um, today's uh, assets. So this is where the, the big payoff is, and this is where the big differentiator is. And then on the bottom of this chart, it's a little bit of a busy chart, but I've got uh, sort of an asset intelligence hierarchy here. So if you step from the bottom to the top, uh, you're, you're, uh, that's how you get increasing in asset intelligence. So it starts from kind of dumb machines with no software or maybe just embedded control software through um, instrumented, I'd call it. Um, and there are var variations of this kind of a, a stepping stone chart. But uh, So the next step is provide data externally. And then, then the, the asset may determine its own status and needs and maybe even order some repair parts or some such thing, uh, which would be the active case where it seeks to maintain itself. Then it might be goal-oriented. In other words, I've got a job to do. I'm going to make it happen. Or competence so that it takes it even to the next level and it, and it acts on its own behalf to uh, follow some higher level instructions. And one example when you start to have those kind of assets as products is that maybe you can change your business model a little bit so that instead of shipping products to customers, you can, sh you can provide products as a service. Um, it takes a different business model. It takes a different kind of organization to support that kind of thing. But we have some examples out there 
you know, with jet engines provided uh, under the power by the hour model, or with uh, medical devices in a similar way, or here's another example, which is the Zipcar model. If for those of you not familiar with that, it's it's kind of a car um, rental service where you could sign up and then use the car um, as you need it. Um, so the difference with the Zipcar model is that they w they did it really outside of the manufacturing organization, which I guess could be a cautionary tale as well. So while there's an opportunity for this kind of a new business model for manufacturers, it could be done by third parties as well. So information-driven companies make decisions based on data. They're beginning to use massive data sets. Uh, they embrace the IT technologies throughout the enterprise and generally try to upgrade them and keep them current. Uh, they typically have strong IT resources, but are also exploring cloud options. They may be demand driven. They have, tend to already be fast followers, but if not, they should be. They want to put information and analysis tools at their employees' fingertips. They want to collaborate more internally in the ecosystem and via social technologies. Uh, they're focused on services and they're looking for opportunities to expand or reimagine their business using connected intelligent machines and other information sources. And last but not least on this page, they are excellent software companies. So um, let me just go right to here. So some recommendations for information-driven manufacturers. Fund those technology projects. Um, prioritize some of the key technologies. Uh, make sure that the core IT technologies are in place and up to date. Look, actively look for opportunities to disrupt and transform your business processes. If you don't, someone else will. And then, you know, look to ARC or some others to uh, help you track what's going on with technology advances and update. update. Um, and then another, uh, another very helpful tip is to empower your CIO and work to change the culture uh, in order to take advantage of some of the new information-driven technologies. Well, that's all for me.